It is finally, finally the time to announce the winners of the Motors Project's Parkour Film and Photography Festival. This festival has grown into one of my favourite things to do in our kind of annual calendar. The admin is insane. The amount of emails I have to go through is, is horrific. However, it's all made worthwhile by getting to shine some form of a spotlight on some of the incredible talent that the parkour community has within it. What I'm going to do right now is run through the podiums of the four video categories and the two photography categories. On top of this, I'm going to be announcing the Athlete Award, which was chosen by the Motors Project's Athletes, and the Best Film Award, which is essentially the film that the judges thought was just the best film of the entire festival. But before I start announcing winners, I just have to say a massive thank you to everyone who has supported the festival by donating prizes. I'm going to read them out, but the list is actually so long that I have to read it off a piece of paper. So firstly, a huge thank you to Wex Photo and Video, who are a camera store that can be found all over the UK. And they're actually our first sponsor to step in from outside of the parkour community and support the festival. So. A massive thank you to Wex. We've also got prizes donated by Storm Free Run, Ferrang Clothing, Move Mag, Marrero Gang, Contendent, Stora, Movement Power, and we've even had two events donate tickets. The guys over at Nova City have donated one golden ticket to Project Underground in January next year, and then Mark and the guys at Jump Free Run have donated two tickets to Fill the Love and Movement, which is in December this year. As you can see, the prize list is just massive, so a huge thank you to everyone who donated. All right, got a coffee in me. Should we get into it? And so for the first category, which is movement, and it's easily one of our most popular categories. We get a ton of submissions. And what myself and the judges were really looking for here was not only incredible cinematography, but also an emphasis on flow. And so in third place, we were given an overflowing bucket full of flow, that is an awful pun, by Sick Mode with Be Water My Friend. This video is a prime example of the Sick Mode guys doing what they do best. Incredible flowing movement, all captured on a nice wide angle lens, truly deserving of a podium position. Quick disclaimer, from this point onwards, I butcher almost every single name, so sorry about that. In second place, we have Movement by Matthias Knopp, and this is one of my favourite videos of the entire festival. Sick athletes bombing it through a forest, gritty music, gritty cinematography, love it. And now in first place, with a unanimous decision from the judges, we have Unparalleled Vancouver. <laughs> Produced by and featuring Unparalleled Movement, this film is made up of incredibly well composed dynamic camera work mixed with simplistic editing and top level movement. Well done guys. Next up we have the documentary category, and here the judges were looking for a strong narrative complemented by high level cinematography. In third place we have a really well researched and insightful piece from Crew Parkour called Stuck in Park. This film takes a deep look into the history of play parks in the US and Europe, all the different ways they've been designed and the reasons why, and it's, it's just really worth a watch, it's, it's really genuinely insightful. In second place we have Schlappen, Tales from Tor, which was submitted by Max Ward who jumps manpower naked in this video, and that's just one of a hundred other crazy things that happen in a, a fairly short space of time. So go and watch it, because you're going to enjoy it. And Taking First Place is one of the standout films at this festival, Walking the Wall by Marcus Brown. This film focuses on gym owner and coach Scott Jackson, and it really looks into his mindset around coaching and also his views on the future of parkour. We used to live in a flat on the second story and it was just like, you know, if there was a fire and I couldn't get out, I could get out. Like, what? why couldn't any, everyone should be able to like, just get themselves safely down from somewhere. That's what I like hearing from some of the students, especially my adult students. They sort of say, oh, you know, since I've started, I've been much better at like just going up the ladder and getting things from the, from the attic or, you know, just all these little things that translate to their like activities of daily living. This piece, really pushed the level when it came to cinematography, lighting, storytelling, composite, everything really. So massive well done to Marcus. And now onto the drone category, which is undoubtedly the hardest category to submit to because 
every shot has to be filmed on a drone. In third place we have a film that I... I've been trying to film this for about five minutes now, and I genuinely don't know how to pronounce the name of the film, but it's five letters long. Madiwo, Madio, by a guy called Marco Mastro Moro. I've probably butchered that as well, but it's a good film. What I really commend here are the times the pilot made an effort to try and fly more technical and ultimately more difficult routes to try and capture the parkour, rather than just relying on cliche shots. In second place we have The Gift to Move by Jan Schweizer. Creative editing and even some nice sound design, but the real talking point here is gonna be the filming. These guys made the decision to not always fly the drone, and actually to use the drone as a form of handheld gimbal and just to film from the floor. You may say it's cheating, but actually we never said it wasn't allowed. We only said every shot had to be filmed on a drone. And now for first place. He won the same award last year, he's winning it again this year. It's Adam Dore with Run. Shot entirely in the Peak District of the UK, Adam pilots his drone on some technical flight paths to capture Jordan Shaw as he navigates some incredible rock formations. Again, you're watching me hold him. And now onto the final video category of the festival and my favorite category. It's the continuous one shot. I love this one because it really puts the filmmaker and the athletes to the test. One shot, no cuts. In third place, we have David Barrett with Broken Wrist, a dynamic piece that follows an athlete as he flows around the outside of a library. And I'm gonna guess given the title and the fact that he never puts his left hand down that he's recovering from a broken wrist. In second place, we have 2019 technology meeting a 2012 soundtrack with Winnipeg Parkour's one-shot submission. Here we see excellent use of choreography combined with a 360 camera to enable the cameraman to capture a group of athletes across what is quite a large spaced out spot. Lots of sit camera and editing movements in this one. And now in first place, a submission that totally blew the judges away. It's S1 Knack 1C by Philip Graff. One shot filmed entirely on an empty train in the middle of the night. Just watch. And now onto the two new additions, the photography categories. And first up we have action shot. What we were looking for here was a totally genuine capture of a parkour moment. No fakery, no trickery, no photoshop, no nothing. Just a real photo of a real moment. In third place we have Catching the Last Son of the Day by Philip Toy. And I love this photo. I like to imagine a pedestrian just walking around the corner and witnessing that moment as it happens. And in second place, we have a photo from Eric Kravoskis called Can You Spot the Twist? And in first place, we have the simplistic yet incredibly eye-catching composition of Prince of Persia by Evgeny Orlov. Now onto the creative photo category. And initially I had intended this category to be all about the fake, all about Photoshop compositions and, and fake edits of parkour related stuff. What ended up happening is people submitted photos that were still real, but looked very creative. And so much so that actually we had to chat with the judges and just decide that we were gonna slightly change the way this category was judged and we'd be more accepting of that kind of thing as well. And so in third place, we have a stunning shot called Desert Control from Nele Ahrens. In second place, we have an incredible idea brought to life in Check Your Surfaces by Domiyog Yelek and Emmanuel Dolo. And finally, in first place, we have this brain melting shot titled Up Is Down, captured by Peshawar Iranpana. And now for the final two big ones, the Athlete Award and the Best Film Award. I'm going to start with the Athlete Award, and this is the one that the 
Motors Project athletes looked at and thought, this deserves more love, this deserves more attention. It might not have won anywhere else, but it still deserves that spotlight. And it's schlappen, Tales from Tour. <laughs> I think you can see when you see all the injuries how we sit here already. <laughs> really don't care what others think, often to their detriment. It's not actually that surprising that a film that features piss drinking, firecrackers, nudity, and a whole load more chaos has gone down well with the Motors athletes. And now for the best film award, winning a mountain of prizes, including two free tickets to For the Lover Movement. This is the film that stood out from all the rest and actually for the first time ever scored full marks across the board on all judges. It's the one shot. S1 Knack 1C by Philip Graff. A huge congratulations to those guys, and before I close out this festival by playing their film again in full, I just want to say a huge thank you to our judges, Toby, Kai, Emily, and Brandon. A massive thank you once again to everyone who donated prizes, especially Wex, because like I said, they're the first company to look at this thing from outside of the parkour community and to, to come in and get involved. So big thanks to those guys and just the biggest of thank yous to you whether you're a filmmaker a photographer an athlete or even if you just shared this thing on social media thank you so much i really hope you enjoyed it i hope you were inspired i hope if you created something that you were proud of it and i hope that you're going to get involved next year because i assure you this festival will be back in 2020 and it's gonna be big Nächste Station, Wannsee. Übergang zur S-Bahn-Linie 7 und zum Regionalverkehr. Fahrgäste nach Potsdam Hauptbahnhof steigen bitte hier um. Passengers traveling to Potsdam Main Station, please change here. Endstation. Bitte alle aussteigen. Attention please, we are now approaching.